Just as if we were going to start any school year, we started with our goals. So for students, what are our math goals, what are our language arts goals, uh, what are our creativity goals? The only caveat was we're only going to use the iPad 2 as a device. So students will learn, they'll read, they'll write, they'll, they'll practice math, they'll be assessed using this tool, and when they communicate their learning, they're going to use this tool as a multimedia device. Um, teachers got together, we planned for two days on what the a typical school day would look like if it was just the iPad as, as the tool. What we've been working on for many, many years, the idea of individualizing education. Through the use of the technology that we have, through the iPads, we're really giving students an opportunity to show what they know and to really zero in on the learning that they specifically need. You're going to see a whole list of things, and at the very top, it's going to say Karen's photos. So click on Karen's photos. I did. Yeah, when you do that, then there's a Now, those five pictures that we looked at together on the screen are in that group. So if you click on one of those and it shows up, just go back and click on another one. I think it's a taste of what's coming in the future and how easy kids can communicate on a device in a fun and creative way um, with so many, with endless possibilities to create unique projects and different ways of communicating and collaborating with each other. It's remarkable. It's correlated to California State Standards and so you can uh, pick a specific standard or skill that you're working on. They can move through it. It records their progress. So, I mean, there's another way that you're applying something and you're using another application on here rather okay, than... Because a couple yeah. of kids were doing that, taking pictures and fixing themselves up. Yeah, they'll take a picture and they fix themselves up as, you know, grandpa or old Willie or... We actually teach them how to set a passcode, and there is a district norm. It's like the last four digits of their school ID or something. You want to do that tomorrow? And it's just like, this is your passcode. If I ever cannot unlock this thing, you know, you lose your iPad for a week or something. With students saving a year there, it's all here on their iPad itself, and when they present it, it's all, it's easy to find. So, that's going to be maybe some time out of your classroom and time to think about where things are that are now gone now that you have this device. If they found a cool app during their exploration time, is there a way for them to hook it up to that big screen so that they could actually go up there and show us their app and what it does We're, instead of just talking about it? Um, I was thinking that we could chart it here, have, have um, kids that are in the different grades come up and write what they'd like to see. We can't preview the app with that. We can read it, but we can't play it without officially downloading it. I think it would be really fun to have um, iPads next year. For school and instead of using all that paper we'll just have all our textbooks and our um, homework right on our iPads. You would type in what you were what you need to work on like um, rounding whole numbers and then it would pull up a video and you would watch the video to help you understand it better and then below you could hit exercises and that takes you to practice where you can if you get 10 in a row right you've you pretty much understand it then. Um, I just think it's a great experience for um, kids to um, learn how to do stuff with on the on technology. So um, it keeps our planet um, green because we don't cut down trees. We knew it was going to work that way. What it has to also do is it has to replace the paper curriculum. It has to. Um, replace the consumables, all the worksheets and the workbooks that, that we order for kids, and they're, they're so expensive. We spend $160,000 in just the consumables for math and language arts, which are basically work, worksheets bound together. And if a kid does a worksheet, 
they have to wait maybe two hours, maybe a day, maybe three days before they get any feedback on their work. With the iPad or with digital technology, and I wouldn't say it's just the iPad, but with a mobile device, if the software is, is good, then when a child does something, when they put their vocabulary words in, when they answer a math question, they get immediate feedback. You were wrong, and you were wrong because of this, you missed this step. And by the way, if you want to see this again, click this video. And it's a video that they can pause and, and repeat and go back. That was the key to the academy, was watching those kids be so engaged, not just in the games, not just in the cut the rope and in the Angry Birds, but for example, we had them do a group presentation on a persuasive question, um, do you think you should be allowed to take the iPads home after school is over? And they did multimedia persuasive presentations. It was, oh, blew me away. Well, and we're still finding that out. I think that we're really on the forefront of how this device um, can effectively change uh, classroom instruction. And so we have teachers that are working on that right now. Uh, certainly as a student tool, teachers are seeing, you know, this, this is an amazing student tool for uh, students giving immediate information to the teacher so the teacher can then uh, see who's getting it, who's not getting it. Um, it's a way for students to get practice and reinforcement. So teachers are seeing it as a student tool, but it also helps serve them as a teacher tool as well. And I think one of the things that I really like about it is the uh, functionality of, of it being so mobile. So if a teacher is out assessing in their classroom, this device will allow them to assess on the fly. You don't need to wait until the end of the day and go back and put things into a grade book. It's right here.